from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Hello everyone, welcome back to our day two coverage of Big Data SV, Big Data Week in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier and, and the hosts this week are Peter Burris, Jeff Frick, and we are live here in Silicon Valley. Guys, day two, a lot of things going on. This is when the keynotes kick in at Strata Hadoop right across the street. We're here at the Fairmont. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. They have the, obviously their um, main keynotes are very short. They go rapid fire. Um, some of them are sponsored. And they interweave editorial uh, keynotes in between. Microsoft Build is going on up in San Francisco. We got people up there covering that. The theme is about developers. The theme is about big data. The theme is about cloud. Um, what do you guys expect for day two? We've got a big lineup here. We've got IBM. We've got some big names coming on theCUBE. Um, Peter, thoughts? Uh, big boys are here today, John. And uh, the, ones, the, the companies that have enormous amounts of money to start investing at the margin of what these tools can do and find new ways to create new value. Uh, so I think, I think the, the key word today is developers. How are the developers going to enter into this ecosystem and find new ways to create value uh, for businesses through software, uh, as well as uh, a lot of a lot of time and attention is going to be spent to the simplification question. Uh, we've had a number of conversations with folks down here at Strata about the challenges that they face as they try to put these toolkits together and accelerate the rate at which data flows through their organization and turns into insights. Uh, it still ain't as easy as it should be. The thing is, easy came up last night. I was talking to some folks uh, after um, we were on, on here in the Cube, and it, the theme is clear. It's just not easy. Jeff, we, you talk about this all the time. It's got to be easy to manage Hadoop. George Gilbert obviously feels the same way. Hadoop just has to get easy. There's too many cracks. Cloudera, Horton works because they're trying to solve that. At the same time, the big boys are coming in, as you said. You talk about Microsoft's big event up in San Francisco. You're going to see people like Oracle here, Pivotal, Hortonworks, IBM, all the big guys are here making it easy in software, but it's got the theme of AI, you get the theme of DevOps. The cloud mojo for the big guys seems to be trickling into this big data world. Automation, conversations as a platform, big Microsoft announcement today. This is an indicator of where the big guys are going. And again, you know, they can do agile too, maybe slower pace, but you know, when Microsoft pivots and opens up their entire Office 365 to the developers, this is how the world is changing. Jeff, I mean, you talk about easy all the time. Yeah, and, and when the big players come in, I think we see it over and over again. We talk about it a lot. The big guys carry the freight, the little guys are the innovation. But when you see the big guys make a move, and it was talked about at Oracle Cloud World uh, that you guys were at in DC, when, when Larry turns the ship, for a lot of these companies, now they're getting much better at turning. Interesting comment that you made, John, that the Satya Nadella is up at Build and they're going to open up 365. My goodness, would Balmer ever open up Microsoft Office? I mean, what a concept that is. We are at that Bitcoin conference and, and there's Intel and, and IBM and, um, and Microsoft as well. So when the big players are getting in, you know it's serious. They got big investments and they got big customers that, that can make the big investment with a trusted resource that they know can deliver. So I'm excited. We got Schmarzo coming on. Uh, the Dean of Big Data, of uh, uh, Cube regular, Cube alum. He's given a presentation. He's actually t teaching in colleges now. And, and we've, we've been you know, kind of keeping an eye on the community, John, keeping an eye on the, on the Twitter stream. And I reached out to a guy, James Haight, from Blue Hill Research, who published an article before Strata started, the five things that aren't going to make the news. So I invited him to come on. He's going to come on and tell us what are the five things that didn't make the news and did they make the news and now you've been here for a couple of days. So it's going to be a great day, good lineup. Peter, what is making the news from your perspective? That's a great point because it's things that aren't isn't making the news, things that make the news. That's a tell, tell sign. When you see the stuff in the news, certainly there's a hype factor, but also it's what people are thinking about. What's your thoughts on what's the news oriented uh, topics? Well, I think that Jeff raised an interesting point. I'm going to try to try to put a slight different twist on it. So uh, the idea of innovation is really a couple of things have to happen. You have to have people that invent stuff. And we saw a number of uh, small, highly uh, inventive companies yesterday that came up and talked about the things that they're doing in this ecosystem to try to drive new value. And also, as we said yesterday, to try to improve or simplify the way things work. 
But the innovation is really how do you drive change within the social system, within the ecosystem, so that people adopt the new practices. Uh, and two things I think are gonna, we're going to hear a lot today. Uh, and what's probably not at the forefront of the news, because the news is always about the product. And I think we're going to hear a lot more today from some of these big guys about what they're doing with customers to try to drive those changes with a special focus. And I know uh, when, uh, when uh, Bill Schmarzo at EMC comes on tomorrow, he's going to talk about this as well, this notion of what are the new administrative practices that have to put in place? What are the, uh, the, the, the uh, administrative approaches that have proven to be successful in all areas of trying to manage data, and can we bring some of those forward? So I think that we're going to hear more about uh, not the invention as much today, although I'm sure we'll hear some yeah. of that, but more the innovation, the things that the industry needs to do to change the practices of how all these technologies get used. That's a great point. So I want to get your thoughts on, on something that we see all the time. And you see, certainly, you know, we saw this in, in any new market, there's always cloud washing or some sort of, you know, gimmick. The gimmick here in the big data world is, oh, we're going to open up our data. And we mentioned Microsoft. Oh, we're going to open up uh, Office to developers. Or, hey, we want to, we're the government, we're going to open up our data for the citizens. You can open up your data, but what you do with it, how you find it, how you manage it, and how you deploy something with the data really is the news. That's not mentioned. So the news is, hey, we're opening up our data. What's your thoughts on, on that aspect? It's a little nuanced, but it's easy to say, hey, we're opening up our data, but you know, tooling and other things are needed. Yeah, I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges is how do, we, uh, how, how do companies use private data and monetize it in ways that increase their valuations? And Jeff, I know you were talking yesterday about a company that, uh, that went bankrupt and then discovered that it had a billion dollar asset in its data. Uh, as companies move into uh, engaging customers differently, the value of the company increasingly is going to be found in the data about their customers. Uh, I mean, all of us have talked to data scientists that said, if, if a company gave me access to their customer data, I could recreate their customer list really fast. And I could sell that to their competitor really easily. And I think the companies are going to have to be really smart about how they open up their data. Now, Microsoft creating APIs that allow people to get access to the Office 360 stuff, just enormous things that developers can do with that. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. But when it comes to data, every company is going to have to think really hard about what it means to make those core assets, especially about customers, how they go to market, how products actually work in the market, and reveal them out to third parties. Because once the data is out there, as Apple's been trying to tell the FBI, uh, it's really easy to copy, it's really cheap to move. I mean, it's a lot easier to move a gigabyte of data or a terabyte of data than it is to move a terabyte of paper. So it's, uh, this is something that everybody's going to have to think about. And you're right, it's not in the news. This is, this is one of the many practices that the industry is going to have to figure out as this industry matures. Jeff, you talk to a lot of customers and you're on the social stream. What's going on in your mind out in the, in the conversations in the community right now? Around Strata, I got to give a big shout out to the crew at Informatica. They, they have tuned up their machine and have, have really done a great job of, of getting their message out. Um, it, it's, it's actually kind of amazing that, you know, the opportunity to get a message out in social is still so tremendous and a lot of people still just haven't, you know, figured it out. They haven't figured it out. How do you get the message out? How do you go beyond stop on my booth and win an iPad? You know, that's not what people want to read on the social screen. So let me just get that right. So most people, I mean, I'm just teeing it up for you. So yeah, you know yeah. the answer. So most people use Twitter as you're saying, come by our booth, very promotional, win a gimmick or, you know, win an iPad. And it's really much more of hand waving. You're saying, a little bit different, they're more present, more orchestrated, more active? They're present and using as an opportunity to get, you know, to get a snackable bite out. We talk about snackable bites all the time. If, if you've been watching the, the Twitter stream, you see we're putting out cube gems, we put out cube cards, we put out you know, an appropriate style of content to be consumed in that format that is hopefully a trigger to consume more. And that's really you know, one of the keys to social. It's a, it's a method of engagement, it's a trade of value, but you've got to package up the value in the form that it can be consumed. So it's actually pretty interesting. That's why I've, this, this guy from Blue Hill kind of broke through the noise, John, using the CrowdChat tool to see what people are sharing, and it kind of got beyond the, um, you know, come to my booth and win an iPad, which was which was good to see. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a light day yesterday. I guess they didn't really have the sessions. The show didn't open till 5 p. So maybe we'll see a little change. But you know, we'll have our stuff going all day today. And we, as, as Peter said, we got a lineup of big companies, IBM, Pivotal, people that have big resources to put behind this. 
Peter, your thoughts on this notion uh, that Jeff's teeing out, because we are very active with digital. Obviously, we believe it, everything's digital and the experience should be digital. And, and certainly, the notion of presence and being active is a social, um, social equation that a commitment a user makes. And being online socially is a commitment. And so if I know that I'm committed to a conversation, you can see it. I think that's the magic of social that Jeff's pointing out. I want to get your thoughts. I know you do a lot of work in this area. The notion of presence now in the conversation, because the conversations as a platform, which Microsoft's using, this is our ethos. We love that. We have crowd chat. We have conversation data. This is going to be a pivotal moment in the world because conversations are content. Oh yeah, and, and uh, uh, absolutely, John. And, and look, th yesterday was my first day in the Cube, and I got to say, I had an enormous amount of fun. Uh, the quality of people that come up to tell their story and you know uh, articulate the characteristics of the problems that people are trying to solve and the so generalized solutions and how their stuff is helping customers. Just phenomenal conversations that go on. You learn a lot by being here. But I think Jeff's absolutely right. You know, we talked yesterday a lot about this notion of context. Uh, where sociologists would say context is what two people enter into to do something. It's what people do together. And I think, Jeff, your point is so powerful because content is a phenomenal way of codifying that context. And what Informatica did yesterday and what we do generally is create community through content. And that's exactly what we were talking about. We saw it happen through us, through other resources, that folks are putting out content that people flock to, identify with, consume, share, and that by itself creates community uh, that then can be acted on if you have the right tooling and the right approach and the right uh, practices for driving that forward and sustaining that engagement across a broad class of individuals. Right. Well, we're going to do kind of an old school, new school later this evening. So I, I know you got a chance to talk to some of the people that are going to be on the panels. Uh, this evening. I wonder if you can, again, for the, for the folks, tee up what's happening tonight with, you know, your presentation uh, and a couple of panels that we're going to have. We'll be doing our regular social stuff, but more kind of the traditional uh, communication vehicle. Well, look, panel. The, one, of the, one of the beauties of uh, community is that it doesn't always have to be digital. And what we're doing tonight uh, is that, and as you know, is uh, we're going to give something back to the community that uh, we serve that's here at Strata. So we're going to bring a bunch of people in and we're going to have a little networking event where people can talk about some of the issues that they're hearing about. It'd be a great opportunity to have those conversations. But as part of that effort, we want to help shape what the conversation is going to look like. So we're running three simple little sessions. Uh, I'll give a little talk about this relationship between big data and digital. And in that, I'm going to identify or talk about, you know, really what is digital business? Uh, how does big data play into that? And then I'm going to reveal some of the findings of our forecast on big data and market share studies, because that really says something about where the investment is, where it's going, and how it's going to shape up for the next few years. Then we're going to have an analyst panel that will basically, uh, it will include George Gilbert and a couple of other analysts from leading firms, uh, and I'll get them to argue with each other <laughs> and hopefully uh, create good theater. Uh, and then the last thing is we want to close it out with a conversation amongst some customers uh, that are actually trying to apply some of these techniques. So we have someone from uh, U.S. Bank who is really focused on this notion of the information supply chain, of the data supply chain, how to go from sources into the data lakes uh, and set up the organization so that stuff is distributed from there to the various functions. We'll have the supply chain, and then we're going to also have somebody that can talk about the operational side, somebody from CenturyLink who can come in and talk about how uh, they are using big data to drive new levels of productivity within their operations. And then the last one is, because we wanted somebody that can talk also about how big data is changing the way companies engage, very much along the lines of what we were just talking about. And John Furrier is going to play that role. So John's going to play the role of talking about how big data and is, is changing the way that engagement happens in the industry. So, and then we'll, then we'll have uh, some wine and some beer and, and, and talk. Uh, so it's a great way to give something back to the community and, and uh, affirm our commitment to these incredibly smart people that are here talking about how to do this better. It's great. And that, again, is the Fairmont Hotel, the Gold Room. Registration at 4.30. You can go to silkangle.tv and register. Um, and we kick off at 5. I know there's a lot of events tonight, a lot of parties going on. So we're going to go from 5 till about 6.30. We'll go longer, but if you've got to run to something else, 
uh, we understand. But, but uh, again, Fairmont Hotel, Gold Room, 5 o'clock. also want to shout out, it is Wednesday, right? And as you follow the QB, you know, Women in Tech Wednesday, Christina Noren uh, won it for this week from um, Inferana. So, again, go to siliconangle.tv, take a look at the Women in Tech feature, and, and uh, again, highlighting the great interview she had last year yesterday, terrific breadth of experience across a lot of companies, you know, including um, Splunk, who many would say is, you know, the best implementation of a, of a Hadoop solution in the marketplace. So take a look at that. Uh, congratulations, Christina. Yeah, and also go to uh, Twitter search and search on the hashtag Cube Gems and Cube Cards. We're putting out content as it happens on theCUBE, again, part of our new operation we've been putting out there, not only the videos go live here, they get up on YouTube at youtube.com slash siliconangle, siliconangle.tv is a lot of stuff, siliconangle.com, wikibon.com, but the CUBE gems are the highlights. Those are the, the nuggets that are going to be in the stream, flowing out there, CUBE gems, hashtag CUBE gems, and CUBE cards, to get a sense for uh, what the conversation is, if you're on the ground, if you're at the event, or moving around mobile, you can really consume those content assets. And of course, this is theCUBE, we're here for day two, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of big Big Data SV, it's Big Data Week here in San Jose, part of Strata Hadoop, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back with more coverage live in Silicon Valley after this short break.